In order to know where we are, we need to look back to where we've been. So let's go back to the beginning of the MMS line. Beginning in 2005 with the release of MMS-1, Carl Reese from Terminator, the figure was, for the time, critically well received. The level of movie accurate details on the figure was seldom seen up to this point and really put Hot Toys on the map. Jump forward a couple of figures and the series added aliens to the mix with Corporal Hicks, another Michael Bean character that Hot Toys were very confident in doing. Then, the MMS-6 added Rambo First Blood Part 2 to the collection. By the time MMS-60 had arrived, the company had added the likes of Alien vs Predator, Robocop, Batman Begins and Superman Returns to their roster of figures in the MMS collection. So, for two years they quietly began releasing figures from these licenses. However, in 2007 they surprised people and started to dabble in older characters like James Dean and Brando's Rebel figures from the Golden Age of Cinema. Then, as 2008 crept in, Hot Toys began to add more current movie licenses to the list. Figures from Pirates of the Caribbean followed the usual lineup of Predators, Rambo and Superman. Then, they added an anime movie license with Appleseed and Chinese war epic Warlords. It seemed that Hot Toys were truly trying to diversify their portfolio and give people figures from a gamut of sources, east and west. Going into 2009, they added Iron Man, Hellboy and Edward Scissorhands, some new and some old. This appears to be a bit of a golden year for the company as several of the figures released that year are now considered some of Hot Toys finest and sell for pretty high prices on the secondary market like Hellboy, Edward and Ezio from Assassin's Creed 2. They then made figures from the movie The Spirit and Planet of the Apes. Although neither movie did very well, the figures were incredibly interesting. Also, 2009 was the birth of the DX series, which really made Hot Toys the premier 1-6 scale figure company. But even though they were still making Predators and starting to dabble with Marvel, they still had time to drop surprise bombs on their now ravenous fan base, with the likes of Marlon Brando as the Godfather. Marvel was but one license they were making. Even in 2010, with MMS and DX series, they still gave us the likes of Platoon, Enter the Dragon and Terminator. People were now always looking forward to their next announcement and they always seemed to know which classics people wanted. 2011 gave us the DX06, Jack Sparrow, one of Hot Toys' arguably greatest figures. Also, Indiana Jones, Tron, Sweeney Todd and Christopher Reeve Superman. Johnny Depp's popularity was riding high and although the film did not do well, the fans lapped up anything to do with the actor. But it was the following year that we could see a big change start to happen in the way Hot Toys operated. The Avengers was released in 2012 and Hot Toys obtained the license to produce the high-end figure versions of the Avengers team. The movie did gangbusters and the figures sold stupidly well. Hot Toys sold out very quickly. Despite Predator and Terminator making an appearance and doing very well, it was truly the year for comic book movie heroes. Moving into 2013, Hot Toys announced that they were adding G.I. Joe Retaliation, Expendables and Lone Ranger to the collection. The movies flopped and the figures sold poorly. However, the Iron Man figures were selling like crazy. They still released Robocop and Classic Superman, 66 Batman and even Brandon Lee's The Crow, but not all these sold as well as the comic book heroes. Despite the quality, The Crow turned up in sales in many online shops, something that rarely happens with Hot Toys. Given that the new IPs like Lone Ranger did abysmally, it's no surprise that Hot Toys decided to focus a bit more on what sold well. Not to mention Hollywood's love of superhero movies was in full swing and began cranking them out at an alarming rate. 2014 saw Marvel and DC coming up with each new film came a slew of merchandise. Hot Toys couldn't fail. Geek culture was in full swing and had hit mainstream. Now Hot Toys audience was even bigger and was not confined to just simply one six scale enthusiasts. Demand rose although Hot Toys had made figures like John Matrix Commando and Depp's Ichabod Crane that year, 
it was clear that the demand for caped heroes was far more intense. This was also the year that Hot Toys acquired the Star Wars license after impressing Disney with the heroes lineup and their previous Luke Skywalker figure from the DX series. Now this is significant as Hot Toys now have licenses for the two biggest geek culture properties in the world, Marvel and Star Wars. 2015's Hot Toys release schedule was saturated with Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron and of course Star Wars, both original trilogy and The Force Awakens. I mean, Hot Toys still tried to release a few that others had been calling for, like Batman Returns, but there's only a finite amount of money fans have, and the comic book franchises were just too big. The Force Awakens and Batman v Superman made scarce room for other riskier properties that may or may not sell as well. Hot Toys are trying to release Back to the Future Part 2 Doc and Marty, and are pretty close to releasing Alan Ripley from the original Alien movie, but in truth, these feels like afterthoughts, something Howard Chan and the gang are too busy to really focus on and they will be released if and when there is a gap to do so. The Star Wars license does seem to be the straw that broke the donkey's back. 2017 is all about capes and lightsabers and the only figures teased recently that wasn't from Disney or DC is the Wolf Predator 2.0 and a couple of Valerian characters may not even see the light of day. The world's number one high-end figure company really only has a certain amount of resources and time, all of which is taken up by the three main licenses that has made them such a success. Sadly, they are now having to be a slave to that success and cannot do the thing that made them so loved by the one scale community in the first place. But then, they are an established business and have many mouths to feed and many lights that they need to keep switched on. But let's not forget that Hot Toys are not the only one six scale company out there. There are plenty more thanks to their triumph and it's with these companies we may find the diversity that Hot Toys used to have. Creative houses like Blitzway and Asmus have the potential to step forward and plug the gap Hot Toys are no longer able to fill. In fact with Blitzway's Fight Club, Scarface and the newer figures like Ghostbusters and Silence of the Lambs, it's likely that that's just what will happen. Hot Toys are unable to be the diverse company they once were, and it definitely fell off when they took on such a huge project like the Star Wars franchise. But it has left a rather large gap that other companies could fill if only they were willing to take the risk. Now, I'm not saying that them taking on the license is bad. Far from it. Fans of Lucas' sprawling universe are finally getting the high-end figures the franchise truly deserves, and it's fantastic news for them. However, for others who prefer a more varied collection of characters from cinema new and old, they are left wanting, and it's a shame because if we could choose anyone to make the figures we want to collect, we'd probably choose Hot Toys over all others every time. So I truly hope that at some point Hot Toys can return to adding a bit more variety to their roster, but the prize is there for others to take. They just need to reach out and take it. It's your move industry, and we are patiently waiting to see what you do.